everyone. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a great session lined up for you. Uh, my name is Stephanie Butler. I'm an associate director here on the admissions team. Um, and it is my pleasure to be joined by um, Michelle Lee, who is the director of our Master of Business Analytics program here at MIT Sloan, um, as well as four fantastic uh, current MBAN students um, who are going to talk a little bit more about their experience with the program and here at MIT. So um, I will go ahead and, and monitor the Q&A. So I'll try to answer questions I can. I'll also flag some for Michelle and the panel as well. Um, so please do put any questions you have for um, Michelle or I or the panelists in the Q&A. And with that, I will pass it over to Michelle. Thanks, Stephanie. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this exciting webinar. Um, as Stephanie said, you can put your questions in the chat as we go. Um, my name is Michelle Lee. I'm the director of the Business Analytics Master's Program. I've been at MIT for almost nine years now, and I helped to launch the program from the very beginning in 2016. And right now, you are joined by four of our current students in our seventh cohort, uh, which is a class size of 78 students. Um, so it's a 12-month program, and this program is a STEM classified program for students who want to go into uh, more in-depth uh, analytics, uh, optimization, machine learning, and also learn about the data science industry as a whole. It's a very collaborative program. Uh, we work with the Operations Research Center, which is the, the birthplace of the field of operations research as well as our award-winning MIT Sloan School of Management. So our students get to take both courses in the engineering school, the Operations Research Center, do research with uh, faculty and benefit from the uh, traditional uh, business, uh, business school coursework as well. So if you can go to the next slide, I'll just do a brief intro of the courses. So as I said, this is a STEM designated program. Our students actually take courses at our PhD level. And so they're alongside PhD students in rigorous uh, courses in the fall, which include machine learning, analytics edge, optimization, um, an organizational behavior class called from, from analytics to action, as well as an action learning class called analytics lab. And I'll have the students talk more about it. We also have a um, hands-on programming analytics tools course, which is taught during orientation and during January, uh, which is taught in R, Python, SQL, and Julia. Uh, the, the students haven't experienced this yet because we're still in fall, but we're going into January where they have three uh, courses, which is the capstone, which I teach, um, and the ethics course, as well as a communication seminar. That's during the whole month of January, which is four weeks. And then in the spring semester, they can take a, a whole wide range of electives. Usually students take three to five electives and they're also doing their capstone. And in the summer, they go on full time to their capstone companies um, on site uh, for a period of 10 weeks. Um, and then at the end of that period, they graduate, assuming they've successfully completed all the requirements. Uh, so next slide. Uh, so let me just introduce the students real quick. We have Ratchet um, from Delhi. We have Maggie from Zurich, uh, Brittany from UVA, and we have Tom from McGill University. Um, and actually, all of these students are on our Student Leadership Council, which is an elected board of our students. Uh, Tom is the class president. Brittany is the class vice president, and Maggie and Ratchet both uh, work as the director of corporate relations. Um, so maybe I'll just kick it off with the first question, which was submitted by our uh, attendees here. And the first question is, why did you choose the MBAN program? Uh, of all the other programs you could have attended, why this one? So anyone can go ahead. I, I can start off at least uh, speaking from, from my personal experience. I, I was lucky enough to 
know people who had done done this program as well as some of the other programs I was interested in. And um, my cousin who had completed this program a couple of years earlier had spoken very highly of it and sort of pointed me in the direction of some, some of the highlights of the program. So the main ones that really spoke out to me more than others was that while this program is still very technical, you also get firsthand experience into how these how these are all these really technical skills are applied and, and how to really sort of derive impact and um, actually see see the some tangible outputs from from what we're learning in class. So we get to work alongside companies throughout the throughout the year, whether it's through the A lab or the action lab or through capstone, as well as even just in our other classes, the projects can be very, very applied. So while you still get a, a deep dive into these technical subjects and you know your areas of interest within optimization and machine learning, you really get to see how these can function in in just, you know a variety of industries and whichever ones really you're more interested in. And I think that was a a, a big draw for me. Yeah. Yeah, taking it forward from uh, what Tom said, like this program actually gives you the best of both the worlds, quantitative as well as qualitative. And you actually have projects running throughout your semesters while you are like learning all the things. So you can actually apply the concepts you are learning to real world projects, um, be it in the like course projects or the capstone later on, which we are very excited about. So, and definitely it's MIT. Uh, that's absolutely a, a perfect advantage. <laughs> I think for me, what really attracted me to the program was the brevity. It's only a 12 month program. So we go August to August. Um, however, within that, you are learning a, a lot of information. And as my two peers have said, you're also applying it to real world scenarios. Of course, in our fall, we have more coursework. In the spring, we're transitioning a little bit more to the career core. Um, and then in the summer, fully our capstone. So the three segments of the, uh, of the coursework are very much um, different in the 12 month span. But I thought that the brevity of the program was really nice. Um, and I also have to say that the diversity of our class was something that was really intriguing to me when choosing between programs. We have over 25 countries represented. And so I've had a great time getting to know all of my classmates and hearing about their diverse backgrounds and experiences leading up to the program. Michelle, do you want me to continue as well? Yeah, or? yeah sure. Hi. Um, so uh, for me, maybe it comes a bit from my background as well. I um, have three years of working experience. So after I graduated, I, I moved on into some positions into data science, data engineering and quant positions because my background is quant finance. So I was very specific on the things that I wanted, judging by the experience that I had in the industry. Um, hence, I chose this program, basically um, very similar reasons to, to the others. It was a combination of MIT as a name, so I knew that it was going to be rigorous, but also it's business related. So I knew that, okay, we're going to apply what we learn every, and now every class that we do has a project in it to apply what, what we theoretically learn, which is very different from, from my uh, graduate and undergraduate experience. And also the location. So um, I don't know the, what the prospective students are interested in, but um, the East Coast is a great location for industries such as biotech, technology, so healthcare, finance. So for me, that was also um, very, very important. Great, thank you. Um, I think our prospective students uh, are really focused on their admissions process right now. Um, so there's a question um, in the list where it says, what do you wish you had known before you attended the program uh, that you could say to a student who was about to apply? Anyone can jump in. Um, I was just uh, looking at uh, Christina's question, so it's a little bit related, um, but I would say that any experience um, that you have in just background wise in linear algebra, statistics, uh, if you can have a good solid foundation in those, that will be very helpful for you throughout the program, um, as well as any coding experience that you may have. So far this year, we've been focusing mostly on using R and using Julia. 
Um, we used Julia mostly for optimization. And so uh, to answer your question, I think if there's something I wish I had known before starting the program, it would be maybe if you have a chance, uh, look over, there's plenty of resources online, just familiarize yourself a little bit with some optimization concepts, if time permitting, um, but mostly focusing on having a solid linear algebra foundation before you start. Um, if I may add to that, for me, I mean, the program is very fast paced. Um, I don't know where you guys are from, but for example, it's very different from Europe in that regard is that you have assignments every week, you have projects, you have, and the classes go really, really fast. So if, if you can familiarize yourself, or at least what helped me is that I already knew a bit about data science before, and it's not like a proper prerequisite, but if you can familiarize yourself with the concept in general, then you're going to be able to go a bit better with a very fast paced environment that MIT has. Also, one thing that um, I was told before coming to this program, but I was like asking students, what should I do before the program? One thing that everybody told was that take a good amount of rest because MIT's fall semester would be quite intense. So I would recommend you all to take some good amount of rest before coming into the program. Uh, great, great answers, everyone. Um, maybe I'll just move on to the next question, which is about the professors at MIT. So the question is, what are the professors like uh, that you've experienced so far, and which professors have been the most have had the most impact on you so far? We need to be careful what we say here. <laughs> um, <laughs> no. um, so I'll, I'll I'll start really quickly. I mean. All the, the the first answer I'm going to give, which is is that all professors that we have are great. I mean, of course, I think it goes without saying they got their way to become professors at MIT. There's a reason why they got got there, um, and you know, based off my experiences, and I'm sure my my classmates can attest to this as well. It just re reaffirms that this is a, a top notch top notch uh, education and research institute. Um, what I will say. Personally, um, the uh, professor that we have, uh, Alexandre Jacquet, has uh, made a big impact on me. Um, I have a bit of a bias because he's also my supervisor for research. So I get to work very closely with him and I feel very fortunate for that. But uh, I think uh, his, he's teaching us optimization or share, sharing the teaching role of optimization with uh, Dimitri Bertsimus. And I think for for me, just being able to work with him closely, see the how how incredibly brilliant he is, but also how he can just you know map map these very technical subjects to the that their impact and, and how to how to communicate these with with companies and with with relevant stakeholders as well as just interact with students on a day to day basis and um, the the care for for making sure everyone understands every every concept and his ability to communicate these ideas, um, for me just it impresses me every every day. I uh, get to get to see him and interact with him. Um, yeah, maybe I can continue with. Uh, I guess it it goes without saying that uh, Professor Dimitris Bersimas is. Um, his name is uh, well known, I guess, to to most of the people even attending. Uh, this webinar, um, but even if you are familiar with data science and machine learning uh, before, even if you've taken advanced courses in, in machine learning and data science, there are still new things they will learn in this program, and it's because it's based on optimization. So I think that also makes it unique from a content perspective because it's also very related to the research of, uh, of uh, Professor Bertimas, but I think that that is something that you do not see in other research groups and you do not see in other universities. Um, so, so the professor is, is really good at it, definitely. Uh, thank you both for that about the professors. Um, Certainly research is a option here at MIT. Um, maybe some of you who are doing research can talk about what that experience is like, how you got the research position and 
um, how many hours do you work on the research? Um, I can start again here. Uh, so yeah, I'm, like I said, I'm working with uh, Professor Jacques Viet, and I. So basically, how it worked, how it works for most students is that after you're admitted and at, closer to the end of the summer, there's normally a form that's sent out for anyone who's interested in research. I forgot exactly the format, but you essentially register your interest through a form where you give your, your areas of interest, your background, things like this, and then. The professors get to see these and might then they'll communicate who they want to meet with and interview for research assistant positions. Um, so I filled out the forum and uh, I had uh, I got been contacted by uh, Alex or Professor Jacquet to to meet and I met with him and we discussed some projects and things like that and it just ended up working out that I was able to join him on on a on a project he's doing. Um, in terms of amount of work. It's supposed to be uh, 10 hours a week. Um, this varies a little bit week to week. Um, I think it definitely averages out to about 10 hours per week. Um, but, you know, for example, we have to present to uh, the company we're working with right now in, in a couple of weeks. So uh, I'll, I'll admit it's been maybe a little bit more than that for the past little bit. But again, you know, there's also weeks where it's a little bit quieter. Um, so I, I'd say, um, it depends on your project, it depends on your professor, all these things, but um, I mean, all professors are reasonable, right? No one's going to be making you grind away for, for 30 hours or something like that. They all know you're very busy. So again, once in a while, sure, you might have to work a little extra hard, but it's it's super interesting work and they're very understanding and accommodating um, when you also sometimes need to pull back a little bit there to uh, work on other things. So. Exactly. My experience has been very similar to what Tom said. I, I am currently a research assistant with Professor Bertsimus and like you don't have a specific amount of time you have to give every week, but it varies depending on what work you have. So, for example, last to last week, I had a presentation that he had to give um, to one of the committees, medical committees here. And before that, we before two weeks before that, I had to spend a lot of time in, in the research assistantship. But beyond that, like after that meeting, he understood that I also have like um, the coursework and the course load. So he actually gave me some time off and we didn't have a meeting in these two weeks. So the yeah, professors are very flexible and they know that you are um, also doing a like PhD level rigorous coursework. So they are like very, they accommodate all those things. Great, thank you both. And to follow on on that question, the students here, all 170 of them, want to know uh, what is a typical day or week like for you? What do you like, how do you break up between doing homework and uh, going to class and uh, just doing other activities. So can you describe your average day or average week? I will say that um, the average day will um, and week will vary depending on which semester of the program you're in. So uh, in the in the spring semester, we're all going to have slightly different schedules. In the summer, we'll all be working on our capstones, so we'll have more flexibility with those. However, in the fall, it's the deepest dive into the heavy course load, the PhD level classes such as machine learning and optimization. And so we all really do have the same schedule for the fall semester uh, every week. And so we have, for example, today we have an, the analytics edge class, and then we also have the machine learning class with Professor Bert Simas. Um, however, in between those, uh, typically you can find any of us working in E51, that's one of the Sloan buildings here, on our problem sets, um, or also working on our projects. Uh, each of our main classes has a group project. And so a lot of our free time in between our classes is spent working on the projects, as well as uh, Tom mentioned the A-Lab project uh, for the company that we've been paired with uh, for this semester. And so even though we all have the same schedule, there's a little bit of flexibility between classes uh, to choose whatever project or homework you want to work on. Um, it's, it is a great bonding experience for all of us, though, to see each other uh, with the same schedule every day. <laughs> Um, so we're not going to lie, uh, we mostly study uh, and uh, code, <laughs> uh, 
but it's not bad. We love it. And uh, if you love it as well, you're going to have a lot of fun. The thing that I wanted to mention is that everybody, it's a collaborative environment. So we all work together, solve questions uh, that we may have on the lectures together. Um, and um, yeah, especially try to help each other in things that we didn't understand. Um, but also we try to have a life, <laughs> which means, uh, for example, we have a great, uh, great team with Michelle and they um, kind of want us to also have a life. So, for example, they organized a great fall retreat for us this weekend and we just uh, I came back from the fall retreat. We went to a great camp, did a lot of sports uh, and bonded with each other, celebrated Halloween. So you're going to have a mix of those events, but then going back to studying, of course. The, the way the way I'd sort of frame it uh, to sort of um, uh, maybe lighten not not lighten up what Maggie said there, but that's to sort of, to sort of uh, is that I mean we all came to this program and came to this school for a reason, and it was because we wanted to learn from the best and work hard and take a lot out of this year. So we came in here knowing the knowing what we are getting ourselves into. Um, and yes, I, this is absolutely probably the busiest time of my life. Um, would I want to keep up this work pace my entire life? Probably not. But am I very happy that I'm doing it right now? A hundred percent. I'm here to do this uh, because I, I want to do this. I get to work with incredible people. I mean, this place has, uh, whether it's the staff, the faculty, or, or the, the other students in the program, it's the top, top in the world. Um, so the fact that I get to surround myself and work with these people every day is is pretty phenomenal. So I I'm I'm not you know I'm happy to put in those hours and put in the time to to do it all. Um, it's also not I, I, like it's not unbearable. It's not impossible. We we're still able to go enjoy our Friday nights. Um, you know it's all that you're you're grinding sixteen hours a day every single day of the week for the entire entire semester. You know if you work hard during the days and and you know, during throughout the week, during lots of the evenings, you can enjoy some time on the weekends. You can still enjoy evenings out during the week. You can, you just have to have some some structure in terms of uh, you know your planning and things like that, which I'm still very much working on. I'm not trying to, but uh, yeah. Uh, great, thank you. Uh, so. Uh, I guess a, a related question next is about housing. Uh, so the, the students want to know what is the housing situation like? Where do you all you know, live and how is the commute to the uh, university? Um, I can get started with this. Um, so I live in a on-campus housing at Ashdown, which is like a 20 minute walk from the MIT Sloan building. But you actually have very frequent MIT shuttle services, and you also have like blue bike stands almost everywhere. So you can actually take a blue bike close to Ashdown, ride your way to, to MIT Sloan. It will take seven to 10 minutes, and then you can drop off there. So you have like a good amount of good number of blue bike stands all spanned out across the like throughout the area. And you also have MIT shuttles, which are very frequent. So shuttles and blue bikes and walking, these three are my modes of um, going to and fro. Um, Matt, sorry, go ahead. Uh, for me, I live in Grad Tower Site 4, right here in Kendall Square. So a lot of our classmates actually live there as well. And so it's super convenient. I would say it's a two minute walk in the morning to get to E62 uh, and many of the Sloan buildings. Um, but I also forgot to add on to the previous question about a typical day in our life is something I've been really enjoying lately is uh, for our analytics lab class where we're all in groups and partnered with companies to work on actual projects. Um, a lot of our time now is actually spent on Zoom with some of these company partners and actually talking to these data scientists, talking to these managers and really gaining some real world experience in working on these projects. And I think that's super valuable in terms of um, the experience uh, from this program. So I also wanted to add in that that's another portion of our day sometimes is meeting with these actual companies and uh, learning from them and working on the projects, but yes. <laughs> Go ahead, Tom. I think you wanted to say something. Yeah, I mean, it's just really building off of what the others said. Um, all the all the housing on campus is um, 
it, it, it is good. Um, of course, you know, it's, it's all student housing. So if you've been working in industry and been in the real world, you might have to get ready to get used to, uh, to you know, a, a twin bed again or something like that, depending on where you're wanting to live. But again, um, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's all relatively close. I'm in a similar uh, uh, area to uh, Ratchet. So I'm about a 20 minute walk or about a five to 10 minute bike ride. Um, and there's really good systems for getting around MIT. So it's all close and all easy. Um, maybe something to add is that um, once you get accepted to MIT, there is a um, um, day that you guys will go online to, to fill up your preferences if you want to um, live on campus, because we all live on campus. And as far as I know, most of us that wanted to live on campus got a uh, place. It is on a first come first serve basis, which is important for you to know because you need to you need to log in on the day that these um, rooms open up. Uh, there are many buildings, uh, and they vary in terms of the closer you are, a bit more expensive it is. The further you are from the campus, a bit less expensive it is, but a bit also less convenient. Um, I mean, uh, for example, I live on a um, student housing that is a bit further away from the guys, but uh, for me, it's still convenient. There's a shuttle um, next to my door. And something else that I wanted to mention, a lot of the people that we know live off campus. So in Cambridge, there are many shared apartments. So um, you're going to be associated into Slack channels even before the start of the program, once you get accepted by Michelle um, and the, and the um, directing team. Uh, so you're going to get to know each other and already make some connections to the other students and maybe you might want to live together a lot of students for this year have done that so you have the, that opportunity yeah i i wanted to kind of build on what maggie said like agree with that and um also add that i would advise attending a lot of the webinars um once accepted to mit then they uh give you access to all the housing webinars and those will answer a lot of your questions as to when the portal opens when you can go in and self-select Etc. at least for the um, on-campus housing. Um, and I will say, uh, I'm a little bit biased because I am on on-campus housing, um, but I love that they have a lot of events. So in Grad Tower, for example, every uh, Wednesday or Thursday night, they will have some sort of pastry or cookies, and it's a great way to mingle with other people in your building and get to know not only people within your program, but MBAs or people who are here for their PhDs. And I know um, Ashdown, for example, has a lot of events. They had a fall fest recently. And so they had a lot of games and um, free food. And so there's constantly events uh, for all of these on-campus housing options as well. Yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, the free food is a, certainly a culture here at MIT and it's uh, no shortage of events with free food. They call MIT the fire hose because uh, you actually have to selectively optimize which events you go to because they always double book events during lunch hour and dinner hour. Uh, so I've been just monitoring the chat here. Looks like there's quite a few questions about the program that I want just want to clarify. This is a 100% in-person program. You have to come to Cambridge, Massachusetts. It is 12 months long. Um, and there is no online component. Um, and then there was a question for the panel about what did you do before coming to MIT? Were you working or what were you studying at undergrad? So maybe all of you can just share what your background is. Thank you. Um, go ahead, Ratchet. So I come straight from my undergrad. I did mechanical engineering there at IIT Delhi. And I had like done a couple of internships in fields related to data science, business analytics, et cetera, in a variety of companies. But I don't have a work X, work X. Um, like after my undergrad, I come directly from my undergrad. And in fact, I have my um, convocation of my undergrad in, in like on November 5th. So... <laughs> I I am actually going to miss that, but yeah, Maggie can tell, of course, about WorkX. Uh, sure, since Rachid mentioned it. Uh, so I have a bit of a different background from Rachid, which is kind of cool because we're all very different. Um, uh, my background is in quantitative finance, so mathematical finance. 
Um, after graduating, I worked a bit in the industry. I started working as a data analyst for a startup, um, grew in that startup and then moved to a completely different setting. I moved to an investment banking in Zurich. Um, uh, in, so in, in an investment bank, it's Credit Suisse. I moved there as a data engineer. So I got a bit of experience in in the engineering side of the data part. So it's like working with big data, doing a lot of development work with, with architectures and workflows. And then I moved to a bit what my background was into quant engineering. So it was a lot about developing um, pricing models. Um, and um, yeah, uh, this is a bit of my background, but in all of the work experience that I had, even, even working as a quant, even working as an analyst in a startup, um, data science skills are important. So that's why I kind of wanted to take a step back, properly study it, and then go back to the industry. I was, um, I, I also came straight from undergrad. Um, I, I completed my undergrad, but I had um, 12 months at that point of uh, cumulatively of uh, internship experience, starting off doing software engineering and then on the more on the research side focusing on some probabilistic machine learning sort of at the intersection of ML and optimization. Um, so, yeah. Um, for me, I also came directly from undergrad. I just graduated this past May from UVA and there I studied statistics and minored in data science. And so um, I had done one internship uh, in the previous summer that was a data oriented internship for Navy Federal Credit Union. However, I hadn't really had any years of work experience. So if you're in that boat, no worries. Um, and uh, yeah, I was just really attracted to the program and hoping to go into industry following uh, my time here. Thanks, everyone. I think we're going to open it up to the audience. So, Stephanie, do you want to pick a question from the audience? Yes. Um, thank you. So, um, I, I think it was Maggie maybe who mentioned that linear algebra was a really um, helpful tool in preparing for this program. Something else that's come up frequently in the Q&A is coding experience. So, can you share a little bit about how much coding experience you feel is necessary to be successful? I think that, um, of course, you know, any experience you have isn't going to do nothing but benefit you. Um, it can't ever hurt to have coding experience. I can't at least think of any example where it could. Um, but we also, I can think of a couple of, a couple of people in the program this year who are um, super successful, who had much less coding experience. So, I mean, it's, it's not that you can't get in to the program and you can't be successful if you don't have very much coding experience. It just means that maybe in your admissions and your application, um, you really need to highlight yourself in other ways or show that you have why you're, I mean, if you don't have the experience, maybe a question that might come up is why is this program interesting for you? How do we know you're passionate about the space? So if you, I think if you can show that um, then and and if it you can show that genuinely and if it's true and then it means that you can still be successful because it means you're ready and willing to put in the work and the time so again of course having coding experience is going to be nothing but a benefit it's going to help maybe make the transition easier um, um while you're picking up all these other new concepts it makes it you know if you, if it's one less new con one less new concept to pick up um but it also is it's not going to stop you from being successful if you if you truly are passionate and really ready to put in the time and effort. Absolutely. And I second that thought because what matters most is how passionate you are um, to come into the program. How can this program actually help you succeed later on? And how would you add value to, to the class uh, and the cohort? So coding experience, I would say comes secondary, but your passion and your enthusiasm for coming into the program and how this will help you um, overall would be uh, a primary like objective you should take care of. And like, as we all said, the, com the community is so like, the, there's so much collaboration going on. Everybody is helping each other out. So like, even if you don't have a proper coding experience, you would definitely be able to work that through, um, through the program. Uh, maybe if I can add to that a bit more practical advice would be that, I mean, on the one hand, before we start the program, we have one week at MIT, which is the welcoming week. 
and they have already organized for you guys that um, you will go into sessions of R, sessions of Python, sessions of SQL in order to catch up if um, you're lacking knowledge a bit on that. So I think those, those sessions are really, really helpful to start the program. But on the other hand, from a practical matter perspective, most of the people that we interact with in the program have coding experience. So I don't know if it's a hard prerequisite, but it's definitely the case that most of us do have done Python before, SQL before, R before. Yeah, maybe I'll I'll use this opportunity to um, plug our next webinar, which is focused entirely on the admissions process, what we're looking for within that admissions process, how you should approach the application. So that's going to be on December 6th. Um, please join us for that as well. We'll have all sorts of insight from the admissions team um, along those lines. Um, I did want to sort of build on, I think it was uh, Ratchet, you said, um, you know, you talked about the support that you received. And so a lot of questions have come in about this as well. Understanding that it's a really heavy workload and you're busy and it's challenging. Can you expand on that a little bit or the rest of the panel as well? Uh, expand on how collaborative um, the community is? Yeah, like how do you sort of, how do you uh, approach that challenge and how do you lean on one another for support and as a resource? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So like um, I can give an example of, let's say today. So we have a lot of assignments going on. We have a couple of deadlines coming this week, but uh, you don't really have to grind on the homeworks alone because you can actually like talk to people for one homework. You can actually work around, uh, work for your projects with some other people. So you can actually um, balance all that out. You don't have to sit alone and do all the stuff. So that like talking to people really helps. Um, yeah, I think other people can also maybe add to this point. Yeah, I'd also like to add that on top of what Ratchet said, we really are a family um, from the time we were at orientation week together all the way through the fall retreat. We've had, and then of course, every day we've had plenty of opportunity to bond with one another. And you could reach out to anyone in the class, even if you're not really that close to them, ask for help and understanding a concept and they would be more than willing to help. And so that kind of camaraderie is very unique and it's something that we do have in this program um, and that we all benefit on. I would also say that uh, whenever you're having trouble with homework or something like that, your TAs are really just an email away. You can come see them at office hours. And so, uh, and they're very responsive. And so talking to your professors and your TAs, it's, you don't feel like they're too far away or that they're individuals that you're not going to be able to reach. They're very easy to talk to and you have that academic support. Great. Um, this question is a little bit more specific about Analytics Lab or A-Lab. Were you randomly assigned to the company that you're working with, or did you get um, some choice in the matter? Yeah, so how the A-Lab system works um, is that we get to find out all the companies, and then um, the companies all give a pitch. So I think it was maybe a five-minute pitch. Um, where they share some slides and sort of share their problem and their project. And then they, we all the teams, because you're in a team of four, or I think most people are teams of four, um, you rank all the companies. And then there's a very secretive special uh, matching algorithm that goes on in the background. Um, and uh, then you get assigned to, uh, assigned to some company. And from, I think, they released the stats this year that 80% of the teams were assigned to one of their top four uh, companies or something like that. Um, that's, I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but essentially you do get some say in that you get to rank the companies and based off the algorithm, you're going to get assigned. You're not going to get assigned to your last pick or something. You're, you're also probably not going to get assigned to your first pick, but I mean, almost everyone was assigned to their top three picks. I mean, I, although I do say that, but uh, Maggie and I are on the team for 11. We were assigned to our first pick. So, I mean, there's a good chance you could get assigned to your first pick. Um, so yeah, um, it's a process like that. Um, and yeah, it's a really, really cool, really cool class, really cool. Um, I mean, we have projects in all the other classes as well, but this is one where you're literally working with the, with these companies 
Uh, Maggie and I just actually had a call with uh, two members of uh, uh, a company that they're they're based in London. The, the two people we were working with, and we had a call that uh, was thirty minute call that went end up bec becoming forty five minutes to an hour because we were just talking through all these ideas uh, and things like that. So um, it's really really good experience uh, to interface with these these professionals in it in the industry and uh, you know pick their brains and um, what's root. Also, what's really cool, um, and this, you know, uh, is the fact that they're really excited to have you working for them as well. You know, we're all students and it seems maybe counterintuitive, at least for me, to think that why would a company <laughs> want me to make decisions for them when they're all full time professionals. But, you know, while it's great for us to pick their brains and learn from them, what's really cool, one of the coolest parts of the experience is that they are really interested in what you have to say and what what you're doing. Um, so. That's a that's a really neat side of it for me. And just to add something short on that, um, the thing is, you pick your you rank the companies that you you care about, and most of the people that we know got one of their top five companies. But it's not like even if you don't you don't really like the company. I mean, we're talking about, for example, our project is with a great asset manager and trading desk in the asset manager. You have. Um, great logistics companies. You have uh, famous names there like Netflix. So it's not like the, com I mean, the companies are very well picked. So um, even if you don't get your first pick, you, you still have a cool project. Great. Um, I know you are in the early stages of career and recruiting that hasn't really quite ramped up the way it will later on, but what are your career goals? What do you hope to do uh, when you have your business analytics degree? Um, okay, if no one wants to kick this off, I, I guess I can. Um, I honestly, uh, this is a bad answer because the answer is I, I, I just don't know. Um, you know, I, I think I'm at a point where um, I'm gaining a lot of insight into lots of different spaces. I mean, through the A Lab, like I mentioned, um, you know, getting a little bit of insight into lots of lots of other spaces to the projects and um, some of the some of the lectures that we're seeing where things can be applied in different classes. Um, and also starting to speak to we had our capstone preview nights, so starting to speak to some of those companies about the problems within their industry. Um, we had, you know, consulting co your consulting companies there. We had uh, pharmaceuticals, things like that. So seeing of how uh, the what we're learning can be applied all over the place is really interesting. Um, but I'm still at the point where I'm kind of trying to soak it all in and um, get some sense. I think personally, I'm leaning more towards tech than anywhere else. Um, that could I, I I don't think consulting is for me necessarily. Um, but uh, for tech, I think that could be you know whether it's tech healthcare, um, you know I I tech. It could be any anywhere really in the in the land of tech. I, I just want to try and find a company that is doing something that I think is kind of meaningful and interesting, um, where I can you know apply the the technical skills that uh, I, I I like applying. And Tom, that's not a bad answer at all because I'm also I think part of the program is figuring out what you want to do after the program because. Um, you would get exposed to so many different ideas, so many people from different who have worked in different companies, different organizations that you can actually talk to them and try to understand what they did in their companies and try to figure out like, would that suit you or not? And part of knowing what you want to do is also about what you don't want to do. So if you actually have figured out things that you don't want to do, you can, I mean, narrow down onto what you will eventually do after the program. So definitely, if you are not really sure about exactly which particular domain you want to go for, it's absolutely fine, I would say. Yeah, I would have to agree with everything my peers have said and also add that, um, well, for me specifically, I was interested in the program because it has both the technical component and it's offered through Sloan. And so we're taking classes both through the operations research center, such as machine learning, optimization, but then in the spring, we'll have um, time to take more of the Sloan uh, business related classes. And we're taking one this semester as well called analytics to action that completely focuses on business strategy. And so I think from my standpoint, I hope to be in the data science realm, so perhaps data scientist when I graduate. 
I'm not quite sure about which industry yet, but discovering that this year, and as Ratchet said, you don't have to have that figured out. We're still figuring it out ourselves this year. Um, however, the fact that you are taking both business and technical classes gives you the freedom to go into either a technical career or perhaps a technical career that involves some management component, maybe leading a technical team. And for me specifically, that's something I've always been interested in is maybe a managerial um, role on a technical team, but also um, being technical, for at least for the first few years of my career. Um, and yeah, just to kind of sum it up for me, my my interest is a bit more specific. I I want to combine data science and then the quant field, so financial markets. So for me, ideally, I would like a position after this that is a data scientist in a fund, in a hedge fund, or an investment management company. Yeah, thanks everyone. I'll also, I put into the chat for everyone the link to our 2021 employment report. Uh, so as we are a data program, we have tons of data in that report. So check it out. Um, anything from where the students have gone on industry to average salary uh, to the employers and the number of students going to each employer. So we do have students going to financial services companies like Citadel um, and Two Sigma, but also like Tom mentioned, technology. We have lots of students going to Uber or Tesla, Nike, um, as well as um, healthcare companies. So it's a very wide range and it's both small and uh, startups. Uh, so take a look at that career report. The 2022 career report should be coming out um, later in March. Uh, so we'll have that ready for those of you who are admitted. Thanks, Michelle. Um, a couple questions about engagement with kind of the broader Sloan or MIT community. Has anyone, I know your core courses keep you busy, but has anyone had an opportunity to get involved uh, in some way kind of outside of the MBAN program? I mean, this is the perfect opportunity to um, try and um, try and convince everyone that leadership is a great, great thing to get involved with uh, at the at the at, at Sloan and within the uh, MBA and program. Um, all four of us are on the leadership team, and if you are, uh, are if you're lucky enough to become either the president or vice president of the class, you become a part of the Sloan Senate, um, which is an awesome, awesome way to interact with other people within Sloan. Um, you're interacting every week uh, with all the other elected presidents and vice presidents of the other classes. Um, so it's a really good way to learn about the issues at Sloan, learn about the things going on in the other programs, um, and also just get involved in trying to improve Sloan and improve things for your class. Um, so I think that's fantastic. Uh, again, for me, it's uh, it's the, it's been the best way to interact with everyone um, outside of outside of the MBAN for sure. So uh, if you get in, join leadership. Yeah, and in addition to that, um, there are uh, there is an app called the Sloan Groups app, and so it basically lists all of the events. There's literally events every day uh, throughout Sloan, and it's a great way to mingle with people from the MBA program, executive MBAs, masters of finance, um, etc. And so sometimes they have um, games, so they'll go see the the Boston Red Sox or they'll go see a Boston Bruins game. Um, for hockey, I know that uh, a few of, of people from our class went to those. Additionally, I was fortunate enough to go on one of the C functions um, at the beginning of the semester, and this was basically a boat that went out into the uh, Boston Harbor, and so if you got a ticket, you were able to go for a night of food, dancing, and you were able to meet uh, many other Sloanies from all the other programs, and every month they also have C functions that serve a cultural purpose, and so for example, the first C function was a Japan C function. So they had food and dancing and cultural crafts specific to Japan. Um, and now they're revolving around. And so there's tons of Sloan specific events that you can go to and meet students um, from the other Sloan programs. Great. And um, we have a question about, uh, you know, obviously analytics lab is more experiential and very hands on. What about your other classes? Kind of what's the, the delivery method there? What do those classes feel like? 
Um, maybe I can take that one. Um, so we have um, a couple of core courses this semester, uh, starting from optimization method. That class is a bit more mathematical, or at least, or it's a lot mathematical in the sense that it's a, um, it's a very rigorous course on optimization method. Um, we have also machine learning, which is also um, a very rigorous course on, on the technical side. However, both of the courses um, like go into the traditional uh, mode of we have lectures, we have assignments, mainly every two weeks, and they are a combination of theoretical exercises, but to, to make sure that you understand the theory, but also coding exercises to make sure that you apply the models that you learn. But both of these classes, even though they don't have a project as hands-on as A-Lab, they have projects. So basically, you are expected to get real-world data and apply um, either in optimization method, an optimization problem that you and framework that you learned, or in ML, a data science project. So they have their mini, mini projects in them, which are a bit more technical than the A-Lab. You're not expected to... to get business insights, but you're expected to apply the models. Great, that was a great, a great summary. Um, maybe as our final question um, of the session, was there anything that surprised you about MIT Sloan or the program that you weren't really aware of before joining? Yeah, um, I think the thing that maybe surprised me the most uh, is just how how collaborative it all is day to day. Uh, during my undergrad, of course, you know, you have some group projects and everything like that. Um, but this program is so at least and, you know, things might be, be a little bit different in the spring when we're lots of us are taking different courses and things like that. But especially in the fall we really spend almost all day every day together because we have all the same courses. Um, so we largely have the same schedules. Um, you're on projects with, you know, a bunch of different people. You're, at, you know, I'm working with different people in every project. So I end up being, I'm working with, I don't know, 12 or something people within the program. And then just on homeworks and everything, I'm, I'm working with a bunch of people in the program every single day. So um, they really, they really encourage you, obviously, you, you know, they don't want you copying everyone's answers and everything like that, but they really, really encourage you to uh, collaborate and work together on homeworks, on projects, you know, gain insights from each other on what you're working on, A-Lab, all these things. So um, the emphasis on collaboration and how much you spend working with other people, I think, is, is really valuable and something that was different from my experience in undergrad. Um, so it was a, a very pleasant surprise, I'd say. I would also like to add on that um, something that surprised me is really the strong alumni network at Sloan. Um, coming in, I had already heard about it, um, but it's integrated into our classes. So for example, for that analytics lab class, uh, while each team is working on the project, we're partnered with the company itself, but then we're also partnered with a mentor from Sloan. And so they might not have been an MBAN student, but they had gone to Sloan and their uh, touch point for reaching out as you complete your project. And oftentimes they've had some relevant experience in the technical field. And so just being able to establish connections like that, that's just one instance, uh, really test shows how strong the Sloan network is. And it's we're very fortunate to be a part of it. Anything else, or? I, I have one more that I want to add to, if uh, if Ratchet may you to adding to there. Uh, so another thing, and honestly, this is even bigger than the last one, but I, that surprised me, and again, super pleasant surprise, was just how how much it seems that the the professors really really care about each individual's learning and how it's going. Because you know we're at a we're at a school, and um, where you know some of the professors we're learning from are are very are, are renowned people, you know very busy, of course, have many balls uh, in the air, you know, lots on their plates. But the fact that, you know, they'll come in and they'll be teaching this class and someone has a question and they, they know that person by name already just a month and a half in out of a class of, you know, 100 people are in there. And whether it's uh, Dimitri, uh, Professor Britsimis or Professor Jacquiette, and the fact that, you know, they, they, they know us all quite well at this point. Um, the fact that they have that, that 
personal connection is is really meaningful and that they really care. You know, also, I, I mean, the, the time they spend with the students, um, there's lots of examples for everyone I could give, but I remember even that uh, there's a, uh, a, an office hours for uh, Alex to be at uh, b before a deadline for a homework and it was one hour and it was so crowded that a bunch of students couldn't get seats. So he just ex doubled the length. He made it two hours and then uh, just allowed other the students who weren't able to see for the first hour come in and be with him the second hour. And working with him on my RA, I can tell you he's a very busy man and doesn't have a lot of free time. So the fact that he just, I think, gave up his lunch to spend an extra hour with students, you know, interacting. And whenever he's answering a question, he's trying to get their name um, as well. So, sorry, I'm rambling now, but the, the care that all the professors take um, to, to make sure you're supported and um, have that connection is really nice. Um, and just to add on that, something that surprised me, I mean, I studied in Europe before and a lot of universities, I mean, they're great universities, don't get me wrong, but um, for example, in my previous studies, you're expected to know a couple of things. So for example, coding experience. Um, when I was doing my previous study, you were expected to learn it on your own. And here I really like that, okay, before you start, they give you the resources to learn R. Of course, you have to do it on your own, but you you have a huge amount of resources to catch up if there is something that you don't know. So uh, I think that's really good. And another really cool thing that surprised me was that I had this idea of, uh, of the universities that um, um, they, they were not very, I don't know, uh, maybe student oriented. And that was a completely wrong idea. For example, what surprised me at MIT was that a lot of students do research assistantships, even in their undergraduate studies which is very different from my previous experience. So that helps you with financing the, the program, that helps you with uh, gaining the experience in academia if you want to stay in academia and also kind of yeah, doing really cool stuff that's cutting edge research. Also, like although you only see how intellectual people are here, but they are really, really helpful, which is not presented on any of the like web pages or that you would see. But when you meet these people, like any of the class students, any teaching assistants, any professor, you would really find out how sweet they are and they actually make time for you um, so that you can actually prosper. So that's really beautiful about the program. Thank you. I could not agree more. This is such an incredibly uh, special place and program with so many amazing um, opportunities. And, and I will remind our panel that you are part of that special community and what makes it so wonderful. So thank you so much uh, for your time today and for sharing your experiences with us. Um, Michelle, thank you for moderating and being here as well. Thank you to our entire student panel. This was fantastic. I encourage everyone who's tuning in to, um, you know, stay in touch with us, to join us for that upcoming webinar in December. Um, please uh, tune into that to learn more about the admissions process. Otherwise, uh, good luck and have a wonderful day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Stephanie and Jen. Thank you all. It's been great. <laughs> Stop by for snacks. Thank <laughs> you.